me one more day, death. Just one more day. Ladies and gentlemen, the people in this story are already dead. There is nothing to worry about. I am going to tell you what they did while they were alive. Death to me was a fascinating thing because as a kid, I was... Like I had my dogs, I grew up in a farm in Ohio, and we would get dogs that would periodically come into the house, and they would stay there, and then they'd get killed, and, well, Fritz wanted to chase the mailman, and Fritz was out there, and he was chasing the mailman's car, and the mailman hit him, and then Fritz was dead, and then Grandma was watching us, and then I was out underneath the pear tree, and I was bawling my eyes out, and Fritz is dead! Grandma came out and said, Tony, it's all right. We'll get you another dog. And I just looked up at her and said, I suppose it was my sister. You tell me you could be another sister too. <laughs> and Grandma didn't have anything to say about that. <laughs> we did get another dog, and so far all my sisters are fine. But when I was 11, I had gone over to the store, I got the BB gun, and anybody out in Northwest Ohio had to have guns, so even kids, and I got out there, and I was plunking away at birds, and I wasn't coming close to hitting anything until all of a sudden, I, oh, this little sparrow just fell down, it was flapping his wings, and I was, oh my gosh, and I, I had to go up and shoot it again to kill it, and I thought, this is terrible, it had no meat, I was not going to eat it, I wasn't going to do anything, and I thought, Oh, it took the thrill out of shooting stuff. Though, when I was 12, I had gone to our neighbor's Willitzers, and they had a farm. My father grew soybeans and wheat on his farm, but the neighbors, they had a bunch of pigs, and they had a couple dairy cows, and they had chickens, and they would always butcher a pig in the fall, and when I was 12, my job was to go there when they butchered and to scrape the hide and to go ahead and like I had to watch them as they shot the pig in the head and then they hang it up and then they got the back you know the back feet and they're hanging it over here and then they got to cut the neck so all the blood drains out and then I'm over here scraping the hide and I was so grossed out I almost for about 15 minutes decided I was never going to eat bacon again but I love ham. I love bacon. And I love pork chops. And I realized, oh, this is the balance for what you do. And that same year, my grandpa, he, when I was just a kid, my grandpa had died. He was, well, I look back on it, and I would say the word to describe it grandpa that we never used in the family would be alcoholic. <laughs> but grandpa, he's the only person I knew that would walk around his fields and he would carry a little bag of salt and he would have a knife and he would cut the tops of the weeds off and then he would take a dab of salt and put it into on top of the weed to kill it. It was like so labor intensive but he had the cleanest fields of anybody around. And Grandpa, when he was walking around the fields killing all the weeds, he would find things. And he gave me an arrowhead that I still have. But the thing I thought was so cool was this rusted bowie knife. I mean, it was just one big hunk of rust, but Grandpa gave it to me and said, Tony, this used to be Daniel Boone's. <laughs> <laughs> wow! Grandpa knows everything! <laughs> and I had that until it just fell apart. And Grandpa, why, we would be over to his house. He and Grandma had this old farmhouse, and they had a wood stove in the kitchen, and they had a wood stove in the dining room, and then they had a fuel oil stove in the living room. And I thought it was because Grandma and Grandpa just loved having, you know, wood stoves and all the effort that it took for Grandpa to chop the wood and to take it out and to pile it up and to bring it into the house. And only as an adult did I realize that Grandma and Grandpa... They were also what you would call poor. But we never used that word either because we would go there and Grandpa, like before supper, Grandma would invite our family. We only lived about an eighth of a mile away. Going to Grandma and Grandpa's house was the first place I was allowed to ride my bicycle. We would go there for supper once a week and we would hang out with Grandma and Grandpa. It was always a pot of spaghetti or having something. And Grandpa always had his, he made wine. 
from Welch's grape juice. <laughs> this was nothing but a fermented alcoholic drink. <laughs> and he had it in a gallon jar, and he had this big balloon on the top. And when the fermentation would go, and then it would fill up the balloon, and then when the balloon had fallen down, it was ready to drink. <laughs> and Grandpa would pull the balloon off, and he would say, come here, Tony, you want to sip it? This is the good batch. And I felt like I was so grown up, and I would have some of that. And I even then, I thought to myself, this tastes like shit. <laughs> but of course I was going to take it because Grandpa was giving it to me. And I would drink and say, ooh. And Grandpa, there's rumor in our family that when my cousin Jimmy was only five, Grandpa was having Blatt's beer. Has anybody here ever had Blatt's beer? It's from Milwaukee. I don't know how they get the cat to pee in the bottle. <laughs> but it is, oh, it's a, oh, it's water, that's salt. And you, but Grandpa loved Blatt, Blatt's beer, and Grandpa would say, here, here, and gave Jimmy a sip of beer when he was five. Unlike me, who only wanted to have one sip of the wine when Grandpa gave it to me, Jimmy said, oh, that's good, and he had another sip, and another sip, and another sip, and little Jimmy, got loaded before supper. <laughs> and Grandma was so upset at Grandpa to say nothing of what Aunt Mary had said about Grandpa getting her son loaded at only five. But I think that's what inspired Jimmy to travel over to Germany and marry a German woman and live in the land of beer for the last 30 years. And Grandpa, Grandpa would, he's the only person who would drive in our front yard and he would cut across the yard and pull up right in front of the door and honk his horn when us kids got to jump in the car to go to church on Sunday with Grandpa. And Grandpa, like, he drove in there and you could see ruts in the yard. My father never complained about it. And Grandpa was so religious, he would be at Mass and he would start to recite the rosary out loud for everybody else in church. And everybody else in church is reciting with him. And I thought that it was kind of embarrassing and kind of cool all at once that Grandpa's doing this. And Grandpa, he found, we found out that he had an ulcer and he went to the VA hospital. And they didn't have money for the hospital. So they had, Grandma and Grandpa had to borrow $400 from their daughter to go ahead and have Grandpa get taken care of in the hospital.